All right. Hello? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, we're good. All right, howdy, everybody. We are back with Far Cry 3. Um, and we're back with the bow run. I'm having a very normal, very normal morning. Oh, there's that sound I missed. Yeah, I've simply been using too many guns recently, and I am ready to return my roots. Turn to the man I should be. I need, I need, I need, uh, I need medicine is what I need. Uh, yeah, there it is. Give me those dollars. I got 20 arrows. Honestly, I, I don't remember how many arrows the maximum, the maximum thing has, but, uh, I definitely need to get that as soon as possible. I, oh yeah, more more bandages. I fucking love that. It's like universal universal game medicine as always. Just bandage your your left forearm. That's that's all you need to do. Gunshots, you know, broken bones, third degree burns, probably probably tumors too. You know, just just bandage your left arm. You're good to go. Something about this game, it's like, uh, it felt like it was ahead of its time, but in, like, a weird way. Because, like, um, it, it, it felt like a lot of games, uh, around, like, kind of after this game came out, kind of had the same thing going on, where they were, like, uh... Okay. Felt like a lot of uh, games like after this one came out had like a big survival crafting focus, or may maybe maybe this wasn't ahead, but it was instead like kind of around the same like the right 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 time. Because I feel like the forest and rust and uh, a bunch of other like crafting survival games kind of came out at the same time, and then like also there was a bunch of games that came out around the same time that had like they were like stealth focused games that like were shooters, but also featured like crafting in some way. And like a giant open world that had like a bunch of activities sort of shotgunned onto it. Like I feel like Far Cry I feel like Far Cry 3 was like the one that like got everyone into that formula and then uh and then like a bunch of other games just beat it to death, essentially. Uh let's see, what are we doing? I don't I'm not I'm not really interested in doing side quests. Oh yeah, boom. We've got Willis that we need to I always find it interesting that they gave you a fast travel point right in Bad Town, just in case you want to, like, skip all the other stuff. We'll actually pop over there. I'll, we'll do the tower and the, the outpost around there just to secure the place before we do Willis's stuff. Got a Coke Zero today. I I don't know. It, it, I told myself I'd stop drinking, like, soda, and then the second I, like, moved, I, I'm picking up a lot of old habits that I thought I, I, thought I got rid of. Goes to show you're never you're never completely. You, you got to be careful about these things. Don't be like me. Go uh go be your um. Go be your own person. If you if you drop a bad habit, just make sure it stays dropped. Just don't don't even don't even test yourself by buying the thing that you used to have a lot of. Like I've I've, I've I used to have a used to have a big serious issue with eating a ton of sugar, and now like every time I see Oreos in the supermarket, I have to like fight myself. I have to go, no, I'm past that. I'm not about that life anymore. No longer a slave to those those little cream sandwiches. I fought out of that on my own man now. I'm better, wiser, healthier. I know this isn't 100% true, but, like, my parents tried everything, like, in the book to try to convince me not to consume, like, candy and soda whenever I was given the option. Like, uh, and it was always, the the thing that was brutal about it is that it was, like, the, it was, it, it's, like, the best way to trick a kid is to give them a mix of, like, real and fake information. So, like, it's, like, oh, yeah, soda has caffeine and it'll stunt your growth, and that was true. And then it was like, uh, oh yeah, uh, candy will um, candy will give you nightmares, which is only true sometimes. And if you eat it like right before you sleep. And then there was the, hang on, I forgot to close my.
Sorry about that. Uh, forgot to forgot to close my window. That's something I normally do before uh, streaming. But uh, they also told me that um, what was it? I also I also heard this wasn't my parents, but it was some other kids. They also told me that like the 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 white stuff in between the the chocolate and Oreos was a uh, lard, <laughs> just pure raw pig fat. And I don't know. I like totally believed that when I was a kid. I think because like I looked at like I saw I saw what lard was. It's like it's like because when it's rendered, it's like white because it's fat, right? So I looked at that and I looked at I looked at Oreos and I was like, wait. Wait, that might not be wrong, so I would, I would avoid them. And then after a while, I picked up an addiction to them in like uh, when I was older and allowed to uh, buy my own stuff. But I'm past that now. I haven't eaten an Oreo in like... I think straight up half a year, so I'm making progress. Oh, the M700's free in stores. Like I said, you wanna... If you're playing this game and you want to do really well, you... Just take a suppressed, like, sniper, and then just start every outpost by popping everyone you see. It's the easiest way. It's lame, but, um, you know, it's, ob it's like, objectively the safest way. It's like the, it's like a, it's like this game's equivalent of the Stealth Archer build in Skyrim. <laughs> just like, oh yeah, no, it's straight up just the easiest way to take enemies out, because it's quick and efficient, you don't have to worry about them, like, attacking you, so it's like, you know, you can just do it. Not a huge problem. Oh yeah, Bad Town's big red because Camp Murder's nearby. Exciting. Doesn't seem to be doing too well. I like how the mission for Bad Town is called the Bad Side of Town, but the implication is that the whole town's just one big perpetual bad side. I started the mission. Well, we can go back to it sometime. <laughs> I want to do the outpost. I leave. Wow, how long is that? How long is it going to warn me for? <laughs> Notification's been up there for a while. Oh, no. I failed it. Oh. No, you're kidding. Are you serious? Okay. Alright, I guess I have to do the objective then. <laughs> Because I accidentally wandered into the uh, the objective area. That's not great. <laughs> Alright, whatever. I guess we'll do it. This man. This woman's almost dead. There's someone around here that, like, says a whole bunch of stuff. Gun. Where is she? There's, like, a woman in a chair somewhere around here. That says a bunch of crazy stuff about her being an arms dealer, and it's like a big reference to uh, Far Cry 2. God damn it. Don't get ahead of yourself. We'll take care of one problem at a time. Same, buddy. I've got to find the man in white. So what's the plan? They find the man in white. These guys are wearing white. In fact, they're identical. Oh, there he is. About Snow White. Shut up about Snow White. Every time you tell the story we're playing. No, 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 let him talk. I love what Disney. Snow White camp. Next thing you this know, isn't the version I remember watching. Oh, that's the worst version of the story I ever heard. You ruined the drama. Sounds like Hoyt needs to step in. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Hoyt will make quick work of the guy, that's for sure. He'll probably kill him with his own machete. He already did with the owner of the mine. Hoyt's an artist. He'll kill this one, special. Am I right? What'd you say you look like again? All in. No. Pretty blue dress, black hair. Skin as pale as the snow. Rosy cheeks. Nice play. Those guys are cowards. The guy from my vision. He's gonna lead me to keep an Oliver. That man's the key to this. I know. Did he spot me? No. No. We're good. I gotta stay on him. Can't let him see me. Literally stumbled into the man. <laughs> Forgot I was supposed to be tailing him. 
Oh, God. I remember this era of Ubisoft games where, uh, like, every single game they made had a tailing mission, and they're always the lamest ones, because it's like, you just kind of have to... Like, they're super slow, nothing really happens during them, and, like, nothing... Like, nothing interesting happens during the missions. So you just kind of have to sit and, like, stare, and then he goes, Oh, there's someone behind me? And then you have to hide behind, like, an object and then creep up a bit longer. Assassin's Creed was the worst with these. And, like, I get it. I get it. I get that it's supposed to, like... You're, you're supposed to interact with, like, the parkour aspect of the game for it. And, like, that is a very assassin thing to do to follow someone around until, like, uh, you can, um... Until you... So you can figure out some information. But, like... Ew. I wrote it out. <laughs> Not that often I get to hold a pin. So much for English school. Here's your money. Take good mentaro, get rid of us. Hey! Fucky, fucky, sucky, sucky. Those words interest you? I'm working tonight. We all are, baby. What the hell is happening? Yeah, this game's a little jank. A little janker than I remember. <laughs> hey, you something? No, I can see them just fine. The circle's right there. Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> I gotta keep up with him. That's rough. <laughs> rough being out here. Another thing I think that's funny about this place being called Bad Town is that, like, it, it implies that there's some other standard of town you could compare it to, but, like, there's, like, there's, like, two towns in this whole island. <laughs> and the other one's not great. The other one's not great either. <laughs> like, I guess it's better than this place, but, like, I don't know. How you doing, buddy? Someone around a little bit. I gotta stay on him. I'm on him. Jesus Christ, Jason. <laughs> this guy's walking like <laughs> this guy. This guy's walking like a quarter of a mile an hour. <laughs> Are we done? Is it over? Oh god, he's a powerful man. Just telekinetically open that door. That was the whole mission. Alright, let's go clear that outpost real quick. Because I really want to do it. <laughs> I like the game just like allows you to pull your gun out, but it just automatically like holsters it, so you can just do this. <laughs> right. Oh god, I've got six points available. <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh wait, we unlocked more. Uh, that's right, 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 right. We unlocked more. Um, we unlocked more abilities because uh, we got the we we did the thing with uh, Citra. Finally. Give me all the healing ones. I'm gonna need it. <laughs> I'm doing a stupid thing. There we go. Stability with the bow, drawn fire 50% faster. Alright, that's the next one I'm getting. Excellent. Oh no, I'm in water, so Jason doesn't get to look at his uh, tattoos. There's a little animation that plays for those of you who haven't played this game where uh, when you have the when you have the tattoos out, he just kinda like stares at it and then they just fucking like glow and materialize on his forearm. Because, you know, shit's, shit's magic out here in the Rook Islands. I know, I've got the... I've got the archery run in this game. Uh, I could do it in Far Cry 4, but I don't think it'll be as fun. What would I do for Far Cry 4? There's nothing particularly special about that game compared to the other Far Cry's. Far Cry 4 was, like, really, really similar to Far Cry 3. Like I think, uh, I think it shows the least modification between the games, like uh, out of like any, all the other ones in the series.
What could I do? I could do like an explosives only run. That might be fun. Although that wouldn't be that wouldn't feel as much of a like as a bunch of a big deal. Stick. Stick. Alright, success. We got him to set himself on fire. Victory. You want fire to stab yourself? Come on, Jason. I thought you were a professional. Come on. I know one thing I could do with Far Cry 5 is do like a melee weapon only run, because uh, one thing about Far Cry 5 that makes it special is that it was the first Far Cry they released after Far Cry Primal, which meant that they carried over like the melee system in Far Cry 5 Primal, which is really funny because the melee system allows you to freely like swing and throw like multiple weapons, like you can hold them in your inventory. And in Far Cry 5, there's a... Uh, like, not only are there a bunch of, like, bludgeoning weapons, but there's also a fucking... There's a shovel. And the shovel's, like, the best melee weapon in the game, by far. So, and because it, uh, not only does it do more damage than the rest, but also you can throw the shovels, like, javelins, and they, they instantly kill pretty much anything in the game. So, that, that would be a lot of fun. Although, I'd have a... I'd have to, I'd have to make a concession for, like, explosives or something, because there's a lot of vehicles in that game, including planes, that you have to deal with. But yeah, doing like a mainly melee run, that would be a lot of fun. I could do that. Far Cry 6, I'm not playing that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't own Far Cry 6. I play Far Cry 6 on Uplay. Uh, Uplay Plus. Like, I got, a, I got a month of it and gave the game a shot, and I think after playing it for like a week, I kind of dropped it, because it was... Uh, I thought the, the environment was really cool, and some of the mechanics that they added were interesting, but they also did this one really awful thing, where they uh, they made it so that there was a whole armor bullet system in the game. Uh, they, like, like a more tactical shooter thing, where uh, there's like soft armor targets, and there's like, uh, there's heavy armor targets, right? So, that, if you, so your, your bullets can also have specialized, uh, your, your guns can have specialized bullets, like ones intended for like, uh, soft armor targets, so I guess that would be like hollow points, whereas like, there's also bullets for, uh, heavily armored targets, like, uh, armor piercing rounds. But what happens is, is that if you mix and match, that means you basically have one gun for one type of enemy, and all the enemies are running around like normal Far Cry enemies, and um, are like all just attacking you at the same time. So sw switching your weapons back and forth just to like deal with the specific type of armor that the enemy in front of you has is a little annoying. Also, it's like the game's too punishing when it comes to using the wrong type of bullet for the raw for the different guy. Cause like if someone if you're not wearing any body armor and someone shoots you with an armor piercing bullet, like it's still gonna suck. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's I didn't quite get a like a the best understanding of that game, but uh uh, from what I played, I found the, I found, the, I found that whole. It, it wasn't too terrible, but it was very annoying. This is a problem. They've got armored dudes here. Okay. Let's see skills. What I want. Yeah, I don't have the. I need to kill a bull shark for the heavy beatdown, and also, and I need kills with grenades. Oh god. Molotovs count for that? I guess they don't. <laughs> might have to start using grenades. I don't know. Or I might just have to accept the fact that I'll never get the heavy beatdown skill. That's not gonna be great. Yeah, heavies are uh, bulletproof because you know they're, they're covered head to toe in armor, but uh, not they they don't they aren't uh, they aren't bulletproof from the back of the head. Uh, I don't want to disable an alarm before I get any kills. These guys are pretty close to each other. One thing about heavies that's neat, though, is that if you use, uh, use explosives, you can still kill them. Yeah, I think 
I think that all gave me the clap. It's a shame, like, uh, I don't think explosive arrows count for the, uh, the, ex the grenade kills, which is a shame. Oh. <clears throat> Need a good up. I'm gonna pop this big guy first. I'm gonna creep over to the house over here on the left. See if I can wait for him to, like, maneuver his cycle so that he's got his back facing me again, and then I think that'll make it so that he's far enough away that I don't have to deal with him too much. I kind of hope for, what, for like, Far Cry 7 or whatever that they just kind of, like, reboot the whole gameplay system. Like, I kind of hope they make it a little more survival-y. Like, they make bullets a little harder to come by or something. Like, because right now the game's very arcade -y, and that's not bad. It's just, like... I feel like they could get a better feel out of it. He's got the shit. Oh, nice. That was all of them. Radical. <laughs> cool. Was that undetected? Hell yeah. 1500 XP. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one thing that they changed in the future games. I think in this game, the because the uh, the reason the heavies are bullet like they they can't be headshot from the front is that they've got the welding masks on, so they're uncovered from the back of the head, which makes sense. But like in uh, I think in the future games, they kind of... I, I don't know if they change where the soft spots are, but they definitely remove that back-of-the-head thing. Damn pirates. They're scum. Oh, also, one thing that has me a little hesitant to uh, play Far Cry 5 is just because uh, that game's very annoying. Um, like, I like the... I like... I like... I like... I like, I like um... I like the gameplay, obviously, but uh, and I like the fact that they kind of changed up the exploration so that you like talk to people and find out where things are instead of just climbing a tower, which they did make fun of. Um, but uh, I really don't like the way the story is told because it's like uh, not and and I also just don't like the story in general. Like I find the um, I find the antagonists in that game very annoying. I find the fact that they mostly... Oh, I'm gonna use the knife instead of the machete. I find the fact that they... Uh, I find the fact that they uh, monologue at you in all the cutscenes extremely annoying. I find the fact that they kidnap you while you're doing the gameplay so that they can force you to go through a cutscene very, very, very annoying. I think that is, like, one of the stupidest things I've ever... I feel like that's one of those... That's, that's like, a thing that I didn't think a game developer would ever have the balls to do, and I am, I am astonished that it happened. And by, like, have the balls, I don't mean in the sense of, like... Because, like, some people would use that as, like, a compliment. I very much think it's a... It's... it's It deserves to be ridiculed. I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> Plenty for a heavy duty. I need bear skin. Are there bears around here? Where are the... Where are my bears at? Any bears in the chat? Can I skin you? Fortunately, looks like we are not festooned with bears. It's a shame. I thought I think I had an opportunity to skin a couple bears, but uh, one of them just straight up disappeared that one time after I after it died. Yeah, I guess we'll go back to Bad Town and do Willis's quest real quick. Having a bad time, huh, buddy? <laughs> yeah, but uh, so Far Cry 5, if, if I play that game, I'll be having fun. Tell me who you are before I remotely detonate the C4 under the table and this whole place explodes like a pop bottle. Jesus! I doubt it. Five seconds. Jason! Jason Brody! Really? 
Yes. So you're Snow White. Yes. That's me. Where's my prince? I want him to kiss me. Pragmatist. Promising. But do you consider yourself a patriot, Mr. Brody? Thing is, I don't consider myself a patriot. I consider myself a princess. A hot dog at the ball game. That's a gosh darn cakewalk, pardon my French. The real patriot suckles at the teat of Lady Liberty. Upon hearing of the death of a brother at war, the real patriot asks, Did we win? And then rejoices at the pronouncement of victory. So, are you a real patriot or one of those Walt Whitman hippies who cries when the jean store runs out of pocket squares? A real patriot. Bingo. That's what Man, like Willis was ahead of his time. By the way, Voss has your friend Oliver Carswell, and I'm zeroing in on Keith Ramsey. Why are you looking for them? It's my job to know this island inside and out. I can help you, but you gotta play the game. There's something I'm looking for. We'll trade favors. Deal. Right. Did he even have a brick of C4 around, or was that like a bluff? I'm gonna assume that was a bluff. Oh, is this the is this the is this the reggae weed burning <laughs> mission? Spy? I'm not gonna confirm or deny that. Just messing with you. I work for Langley, Agent Willis Huntley. Oh great. I need to get help from the army and the government. You can't. Yeah, please invade the island. Contact with Central Intelligence. <laughs> so you're alone here? No. Are you kidding? I got a whole team. They're out in the field, but they'll be back. These scans they sent have opened up a grade A can of worms. I can't talk to you about it, but trust me, it's big. Sounds huge. I need more info, though, from the source. I'm gonna be honest, I always had this headcanon. I'm not sure how real it is, because I don't I don't dumpster dive through lore that often. But uh I, I don't beauty was invented in the I always assumed uh, Willis was like a. I always assumed Willis was like a like a CIA agent that got lost. Like you know, like they lost track of him, and now he's just kind of floating around, and he's not like attached to anything. Like he's been so deeply embedded, he's just doing his own mission, and they actually just completely forgot that he's around. So he's just going nuts out here in the wilderness. They didn't spell capiche right. It's like spraying furniture gold. You know what I mean? Anyway, here's the gun. Wow. Thanks. That's what I like to hear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bruce. This is a. Uh... I'm sorry, yeah, Willis. This is like a. I'm trusting you on this thing with Hoyt. This isn't really. This isn't really the century of weapon I'm. I'm using. <laughs> Do I have to take the flamethrower? No, I can just leave. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, I think I've got to stock up on Molotovs, because the I'll way this works... Closer to finding my friend. Maybe Dennis knows more about Hoyt. The way this works is that uh, you need to set a bunch of things on fire, and it's going to be a little troublesome to do that without the flamethrower. Oh! <laughs> Hey, this guy carry and special wow i just need to keep buying more molotovs <laughs> yeah i don't really care what dennis has to say i don't think he says anything important i think i could improve my throwable packs i need goats yeah he told me about Voss must acquire Voss. goats where can i find goats Yeah, so Voss is the, uh, he's the head of the pirates. Hoyt role runs, uh, runs a PMC, I think. Like, a bunch of mercenary, like, a mercenary crew. And he actually, like, owns the island, and he runs all of the, he runs all of the industry. So, Voss is, like, uh, Voss is, like, uh, like, brutality. He's, he, he's all red, and, like, he's all red, and, like, he gets into your head, and he's all about, like, cutting people up with machetes, and he has a connection to, like, the, the... The tribal individuals on the on the island and things like that. So he's got he's engaged with that level of uh, fucked up shit. But um, uh, Hoyt is the he's the businessman. He's the one that's doing like human. He's the one that's actually profiting and like facilitating the human engineering, the drug smuggling and production, the 
all that other stuff. He basically is in, like, he, every industry that, like, you can imagine that's, like, really, really messed up, like, conceptually, he's probably involved in it. So that's why they, they emphasize that he's, uh, he's, like, the real bad guy. Unfortunately, Voss is the one that won everyone's hearts. <laughs> and, um... In practice, so he, uh, so I feel, so the, the, the Hoyt thing is, a uh, the fact that Hoyt's, like, the main antagonist, like, behind the, the primary one is kind of a, kind of an unpopular decision. You guys will see what I mean at some point. I, 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 I doubt there's too many people out there that would be interested in playing Far Cry 3 that haven't yet, because the game's been out for, like, it's been, like, ten years or something, hasn't it? Nearly. The game's kind of old. I can't believe I'm playing a game that looks like this and it's describable as old, but that's where we're at now. Is that a wingsuit? I forgot I don't have a wingsuit. I was playing Far Cry 5 earlier, and I do, I do have a wingsuit in that game, and I forgot that I did not have one in this one. You don't get the wingsuit until, like, really late. This game... Actually, me respawning brought me closer to the goat, so I, I, I think that was a, that was good. That was that was planned. That was a strategy that I just uh, applied. Oh no, we're doing the phone call again. Hey, Dennis. Yeah, what did you find? down here. Led me to the man in white. Turns out he's a spy or something. Good. Funny. I've never heard of such a man here on the island. Okay. Yeah, he told me about Voss's boss, Hoyt. Hoyt Volka. Stay away from him, Jason. Jason. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that foliage work right there. Mm. Wow. Okay, I'll be careful. Wow, that's crazy. The hell's going on over there? A lot of gunfire. Bandito's about. I got a lot of money on him. Nothing to be afraid of. I have to talk to you. Thanks for your help. You turned the tide. Cool. these goats out. Whoa. Hang on. Damn, this, the, the drop on these arrows is ridiculous. Because, like, I'm looking down at them, you know? The Komodo. Komodos. That's probably useful for later. Usually the... I think the way this game does the scaling is that you tend to need to skin more predators as you get to the higher level stuff. Alright, more goats. I kind of I kind of fucked up the first group, but... Uh... Gotta be some more goats around here. Come on, I don't want to spend too much time hunting. I feel like a bad streamer. <laughs> I'm also out of syringe slots, and I don't want to blow. Nah, eh, whatever. God damn. This is hard. <laughs> like, it keeps looking like it's completely good. Why are there more Komodo dragons around here? And we'll just do the we'll just do the old classic. We'll just uh, sequester this guy in a corner. Come on. Gotcha. Much better. 
This is basically just, this, honestly, this is like 60% just a melee takedown run through the game. It's not really a, it's not really anything else. E4 and mines, grenades and molotovs, there we go. Here. Yeah, I'd like to stock up on molotovs before we do the next, uh, the next mission. Because I'm going to need a, I'm going to need a not insignificant amount of them. <laughs> The next mission's actually kind of hard. It actually might suck a bit. Because <laughs> uh, I remember having some trouble with it back when I was um, replaying this game. I think I've played this game through like three times. Um, so like every once in a while, I'll just re-download it and slam my way through it, just because it's like a it's like a fun game. I think like as a whole experience, this game's fun. That's a bear. Oh, close one. Heavy duty arrow quiver, hell yeah. And now I need a man eater shark skin. Some dogs. Man, that's a lot I want to grab. Even with the uh even with the fact that I don't need to build like half of these because I uh I'm not using any of the other weapons, I still have quite a bit of stuff to skin. One thing I found really funny is that that um what was it? I, I I'm not I'm not too into the series, but I heard that um in Monster Hunter there's actually like usually there's like uh some sort of uh environmental reason why you, you you're hunting most of the monsters in that game. Like they're either like not in the ecosystem they're supposed to be in or they're like causing havoc to like the area and like disrupting the uh, the balance. So you have to go in like there's a, there's a good reason to go in there and uh do your work. Which I was kind of surprised by, because I I figured it was just a sort of like you know we just kind of you know be the, you live in a you live in a world where there's like you live in a world where there's like a like an insane amount of um an insane amount of crazy powerful monsters that require like whole teams of extremely like talented individuals to take down. You'd think. Uh, you'd think that. Uh, You'd think that like uh, that would be sufficient to say, yeah, they're, they're, the, the, these animals are having no problem thriving or anything. It's more about uh, it's more about like a, a, an aspect of survival. It's like, oh yeah, this is threatening like human civilization. We need to go take care of it. Hear a shot earlier. I ran off before grabbing its corpse or whatever. Cause like if we really if we lived in a world where the dinosaurs were still alive and also had like the ability to breathe fire or explode or whatever, like um, I feel like we would have fewer compunctions about going out and killing them. <laughs> until I guess until we got to the point where we could like wipe out whole scores of them. Ugh. I like how like all the syringes are in like these sterile vials, which implies that J that Jason just kind of picked up a bunch of sterile vials at some point and then like just started reusing them. Maybe <laughs> but I really want the knife throw takedown. I forgot to get the combat archery skill. Eh, well, oh yeah, yeah. There's the there's the little icon. Yeah, every once in a while when you do uh, when you do a story mission uh, that's supposed to also like show like a like a point in Jason's development, they'll make a little they'll make like a bar across his uh, tattoo. I think like uh... yeah, view tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you'll get um you'll get tattoo like details like based off of the uh, based off of which animal it's supposed to be based on, and then they'll make this little like line here when you're allowed to hit like the next tier, 
And I think they do this one here, like, a little bit later, and then, like, this is, like, all the best, uh, these are all, like, the best, like, higher tier skills, and I think this is supposed to be the last one, which has, like, story relevance. It's a really sick-looking tattoo, so... So it's a, it's a neat, it's a neat, uh, system. Yeah, I don't need too many of the skills, because a lot of them are, like, weapon handling, which I'm not concerned with right now. Okay. Good. There's a there's a bunch of Path of the Hunter quests. I need to look up which ones are like where, cause I don't wanna I don't wanna just I don't wanna check all of them. You, you need you need certain Path of the Hunter quests in order to uh. You need certain Path of the Hunter quests in order to uh like uh get the the last in order to get the the big special um the big special pelts for uh for like the last upgrade. In any given, uh, for any given type of container that you've got with you. Sorry about the. It's like, yeah, yeah, so you'll have like a reward for animal skins, which is just a thing you do for money. We don't need to do that. But like, there'll be a big, like, rare, like, stamped across it, I think, in order to show you where the, uh, to show you that there's a, there's a big one up for grabs. I think Maneater Shark is the one we need for the Quiver. We've got another one that we're probably going to use for throwables. I think I'm probably going to kill, like, five enemies with grenades just so that I can unlock the takedown. But, like, I, I think that's going to be it for grenades. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, rare. So what, what's this for? Golden Tiger. I think that's for the ammo pouch, which we don't need. Uh, What's this one? I think uh, I think what I I think what I take because each of those things pop up on the bounty boards for each of the each of the outposts. So I think I'll just keep checking the. I think I'll just check them progressively as we go. I want to make this as uh, I want this I want to make this experience as smooth as possible because I know I can definitely I if if there's one thing I can do I can make any game completely fucking miserable to watch. That is a skill. That is a skill I possess, and I want to avoid falling into that. <laughs> Rare. This probably isn't a blood Komodo. Okay. We need another Komodo skin somewhere. Um. I think we'll pick that up later. I don't. I don't really. I don't think it's that necessary quite yet. One horn buffalo, not yet, not yet. All right. Well, I know the ones I've seen, so if it pops up again later, we'll know. Uh, we've got an objective down there, which means we should probably take this radio tower. Hilo sunrise. <sighs> that reminds me, I want to do a disco Elysium run at some point, but um, I was about to say it might not be that popular, but like I don't really think I I don't really think that's a deciding factor anymore when I decide which games to play, so I think I'll just go for it. it doesn't really matter, there's not too many of them, so I think I can just do whatever the fuck I want. Also, I don't know, I think even if I was like popular and there were people complaining about the games I picked, I don't think I'd like want to listen to them too much, all things considered. Not that their opinions, like, wouldn't be valuable, but, like, ultimately, like, my, the... Cause that's the thing with streamers, isn't it? Like, ultimately, the quality of what you produce and, like, what you provide to people is determined very heavily by, like, uh, whether or not you're enjoying yourself. And, like, I'm not gonna enjoy myself if I feel like I'm pushing myself to do something just to satisfy some, like, numerical thing. Like, I don't know. I know the way I think, and I know the way I am. Like, I have to, I have to, like... 
I have to do something I like if I'm going to be sticking with it. I, I used to have, uh, my parents used to actually have some trouble with me because it was like, uh, I just really didn't want to take tests, so as a result my grades would be awful. And then the second I figured out, oh, I should, I should do this because it's important for me, like I started doing much, much better in school. But I used to have a history of just doing absolutely god-awful on my, on like exams and stuff because I just, I, cause like when I was younger, like I just didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care and I didn't like doing it, so I didn't want to do it, so I didn't do it. And like, I'm, I'm more mature now, like I'm more capable of making myself do things I don't want to do because I feel the need to, because that's part of being an adult, but like, uh, I definitely don't enjoy it and I have a really, really hard time putting significant mental effort towards it, so I, I'm aware that if I want to... I want to not suffer deeply in life. It's I should focus more on what I want to do and less on what I feel I, I feel like I should do based on someone else's suggestion or or insistence. That's just it. I mean, like, uh, for work, too, and, uh, for just anything that requires a lot of, uh, a lot of your time, a lot of your effort, a lot of your life, you need to, to make sure it's a good thing you're doing. Like, you gotta be, you gotta get something out of it, because otherwise it's like, you know, what's the point? It's not just money, it's not just, uh, it's not just money or exposure or whatever. I don't know. There's a lot of, like, hustle culture out there, you know? And, uh, there's... It, it's, like... It, money and prestige and all that, those are just, like, mediums. They're, like, means to an end. Like, you, it, in the end, like, uh... What, like, whether or not the time was worth it is gonna be determined by whether you got satisfaction out of it. And unless the... Unless the money itself, or the... The, the grind itself, or, like, the fee... Like, you know, some people, like, just the feeling of progressing is enough for them, and that's that's great. That's that's good. Um, that that enables them to do that, but that's not that's not good for everybody. So acting like that's the only way to progress or the only way to get anywhere, like that's just not right. I might pick up the flare gun, honestly. Honestly, considering it. <laughs> that's a bear. Uh oh. Been down there, dummy. Can't climb, can you? This is a really stupid thing to do, but I'm in a video game, so it's okay. Yeah, you're running away from me. You can't handle this. What is it doing? Is it going inside a house to... Is it taking cover from me? <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck this, I'm going home. Go take that outpost out. Out of the way! Beep beep! Woo! Holy shit, that tree came out of nowhere. Just came right at me. Ah, oh, yeah. You know, the roads are rough these days, but I know them. Mmm. <laughs> We're making good time. Ah, oh, yeah, just a little smoke. That's how you, that's how you know the car is running, you know? <laughs> There we go, now we're on the highway. Yep, they don't they don't make cars like they used to. Right, I think the outpost is like right down there, so we'll just Alright, have fun with that bear fellas. Wow, that bear is going to town, holy shit. One of my favorite things about this game is that if a if an animal kills all the pirates for you, that counts as undetected. Because, you know, they didn't see you. Excellent. 
Excellent. I really appreciate the bear assist. And the car. I think the car I think the car fucked him up in the head a little bit. <laughs> it's like imagine you're imagine you're like you're standing guard in like a camp and a, a car just comes sailing overhead. Yeah, right there. <laughs> I fuck I launched it off of the hill right here. <laughs> yeah, these guys have no idea. <laughs> Remember, it's not a gun, so the car, completely acceptable weapon. <laughs> I, can't wait until this is home again. I got a joint. Sorry, I don't smoke. <laughs> Good for sewing, though, because plenty of other people do. <laughs> Ooh. I have a lot of additional funds. Oh, no, crocodile. That's bad stuff. I'm not not touching that. <laughs> Fireproof. Get full. Agity. Uh, so, where's the weapon holsters? What do I need? I need one goat. Still goat. Do I have to go back to Goat Town. Hope not. Might have to. Goat. Oh, let's go. Let's go there. Uh, I don't think this is a very goat. I don't see him. I have to go back up to Earnhardt's place. My family is the outpost is ours, but if you want to truly help the right yet, you should check out the bulletin board. I don't want to help shit. I'm just here to kill pirates. I'm here to secure outpost because uh, that gives me oodles of XP. And it scratches, uh, scratches the itch in my that lays deep in my brain. That just has a just a deep, deep seated urge to kill large scores of people and secure territory. It's like uh, it's like my ancestors are calling to me through my blood, you know. My banana ancestors. They're probably bloodthirsty people. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just assuming that because I'm pretty sure as long as there has been sentient life on this planet, there has been uh, inescapable violence. <laughs> I need a boat. Well, I can free up some syringe space. There we go. You know, I'll grab my syringe kit too, that would be pleasant. But I need to kill a shark at some point. Like a bull shark. Don't know if we've got any down here. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to I might I might just have to melee it to death because I don't have a gun. I don't know. I don't think arrows do too well in the water. Uh like going through water, because you know they kinda it's kinda hard to penetrate through and bullets have trouble, so why would an arrow be able to do better? <laughs> That, I am so... I want explosive arrows so fucking bad. <laughs> Might have to deal with that, that boat. Not sure. Dude's over there. Okay. Slide over here, see if we can get a vantage point. It's kind of good to know where everyone uh, is, just so you don't get surprised. And also, because, like, I've had a couple times where I killed, like, nearly everyone completely silently. And because I completely missed one dude, it just it just really got bad. Did, did you see that? Was that supposed to happen? That's a shark. That is multiple sharks. Back here. Right, can I melee you? I can't. How do I take care of you? you? Saucy boy. Where are you? You have disappeared. How do I get 
That's a big manta ray down there. Did you see that? That one. Alright, how... Will this, will this work? Yeah, yeah, that works. All right. It's a, it's a boat on fire. I think that alerted those guys over there, which is a shame. Gonna come over? Oh no. This work? Is this anything? Yeah! Yeah! This is what you get for coming coming to my shores. <laughs> Who's king of the sea now? <sighs> yeah, this is fine. I'm doing great. Who needs guns? Bear? I'm still scared of bears, though. Still scared of bears. <laughs> really don't want to have to deal with this thing. Could you, like, leave? Aren't, aren't black bears supposed to be cowards or something? Please fuck off. <laughs> I'm not supposed to run away from bears, right? Whatever. Oh wow, this is a uh, this is kind of heavy. Others? A lot of men. God, they set their whole fucking outpost on fire. I, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> do these guys have? Oh. No, you don't. I see that RPG. I don't want you- I don't want that thing anywhere near me. Well, I don't want it- I don't want it sufficiently far enough away from me to blow me up. I actually would like it near me. <laughs> Isn't there a thing where, like, I'm pretty sure if someone shot you with an RPG at point blank, because, like, it's got, like, a minimum arming distance, doesn't it? So, like, I'm pretty sure if someone hit you with that thing, just, like, just that fucking, just the rocket just hits you straight up, I think it'd still kill you. <laughs> it just wouldn't explode. <laughs> it's so funny when I kill someone with an arrow to the, to the finger. <laughs> Oh no, my pinky. I'm dead. <laughs> Got some fun rocks. Gonna sell those. They cut up a lot of formulas, a lot of recipes in these memory cards. I, I, guess, I guess I'm not too surprised, but uh, just interesting. 
Okay, this is a coastal outpost. We might get the man-eater shark uh, thing here. Oh, I should check my skills. Uh, is that... Did that thing unlock? Oh, yeah, I need to complete more missions. And I need to blow people. It's... Ugh. Okay, crafting. 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 I need a couple. I, need... I also want to make another... I'm gonna need a couple fireproof. Side of slot. Put that on eight. There we go. I think uh, getting to the later part of the game, uh, I think I, I think I'm probably gonna have fire arrows on seven, explosives on eight, and then that'll be like where I'm stuck at for a little while. Rare. Man eater shark. Let's do it. It's a bow hunt too. Perfect. In actuality, the easiest way to kill sharks in this game, I think, is to uh, hit them with a boat. Oh, I think I see it. That thing, isn't it? Oh. The thing looks like it's a different color than the other ones, though. Huh? Hey, look. I think this will kill the shark. No, no, no. I guess not. I think you have to hit it, like, pretty directly on. No, uh, I've done it once. Maybe it's because the shark was doing something wrong and it was like clipping like above the water or something and then I managed to hit it. I've done it before. Isn't this like a like a lot of sharks to have near the coast? Like isn't that unusual? I don't know. <laughs> Not the most informed in regards to sharks. That's a fish just floating above the water I guess. Oh yeah, that's definitely... I'm definitely looking at some stuff that's not supposed to be happening. This is definitely not okay. <laughs> oh no. What is going on? I mean... You know... You know, I respect this. It's like, uh, it's like, it's like evolution, right? Like, uh, like, you know how, like, uh, people on, people on land happen because some daring fish went, you know what, why can't I be on land? And then it just grew, it grew legs. This is just fish going, you know what, why can't I fly? Why can't I go above? I'll just swim in the air. And then they just do it. It's beautiful. I love it. What's up, bro? Where is this fucking shark? I think I found it. I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, marked or anything, because, uh... Normally, like, when you hunt, uh... When you, well, normally when you hunt, um... Uh, for, like, a legendary... Uh, like, a legendary animal, you'll, like, see something special. Like, it'll, it'll, it'll indicate it with, like, a special little mark. That's one. I think that's it, though, because, like, I... Pretty sure it's supposed to have a special mark, but that might just be the one I'm looking for. Like, waiting for him to surface again. Oh uh, yeah, that's definitely the one. He's like, red. There he goes. Sharks are crazy.
Kinda nuts how like nearly every environment in the world has some sort of like mega predator that is very scary. It's a gigantic quiver with shark teeth on it. I can carry 30 arrows. Hell yeah. Maybe Dennis knows more about Hoyt. Are we really calling Dennis again? 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 <laughs> Okay, I'm all done on uh, all done on that. What are we doing next? We've got a uh, an objective somewhere. Oh God, we have to unlock it again by calling Dennis. What did you find? The vision led me to the man in white. Terrible. Turns out he's a spy or something. Funny. I've never heard of such a man here on the island. Yeah, he told me about Voss's boss, Hoyt. Hoyt Volka. Stay away from him, Chester. You think Voss is crazy? All the evil on the island comes from Hoyt. That's how you talk about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's fine. Wow. Okay. I fucking love how Jason's reaction, like, oh yeah, Hoyt, he's like mega evil. He's like super boss, and like Jason's reaction is just wow. <laughs> you up for some target practice? Wait, no, that's not correct. How many? No, I do not have that many fire arrows. I only have 10. Yeah, I only have 10. Yeah. It does not make, it makes sense gameplay wise why Molotovs turn into fire arrows, but it does not make sense like realistically. It kind of makes it seem like you just kind of shove the, the arrow shaft down the bottle. <laughs> It's a shame that doesn't work. <laughs> I've actually like shot a bow before and like I kind of know, I kind of I kind of have an idea for why people don't make explosive tip arrows or anything like that cuz like you can only make a you can only make an arrowhead so big before it's just impossible to shoot from a bow. Like a long bow maybe, but like at that rate like why why bother? <laughs> The main thing that main things that make bows more attractive than uh, bullets is just because they don't. Uh... They don't uh, like for hunting purposes. They don't mar the. Uh, they're less likely to mar like the uh, the hide, I guess, and like um for like they're quiet and you can actually make arrows for yourself. So they're good like wilderness survival tools. Gotta try the flamethrower. Now greetings to the world. Why the one big gun still alongside Skrillex? Okay, hang on. Hang on. We'll we'll get to we'll get to Skrillex in a second. Uh where's the I need to I need to check something real quick. Um the controls, the Where's the customize? Where's the the weapon wheel. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Alright, I think that should that should catch really well, right? Oh Jesus Christ, yeah. 
That's burned, isn't it? That's pretty burned. Yeah. That's a lot of weed. I can do this quietly since I'm using a quiet weapon. Play a dog skin, that's nice. Pretty sure I needed that. This is a bit more fun with the. Oh god, it's hitting. Oh good god, is it hitting. <laughs> Bit of an issue. I'm out of Molotovs and I'm out of fire arrows. Got any Maltos back? Probably not. Nope. This is a problem. This. <laughs> How do I get a? I, I'm gonna need some more Maltos. <laughs> but uh, none of these places provide Maltos. They are very. They were very much expecting me to have a flamethrower. <laughs> What does this give me? I mean, I got arrows back, that's nice. <laughs> God damn, it really did not catch like I was expecting it to. I miss, uh... I miss the Far Cry 2 fire percolation system, which made it so that, like, uh... Like, the fire did spread, like, a lot better than this. Oh yeah, and the game keeps like the game keeps spawning like twenty dudes at once. These guys drop like uh, do these guys drop Molotovs? That might be nice. 
should probably can check without looting them, but looting them's kind of risky. Oh, one down. Yeah, it's a good thing these guys suck at aiming. guy go. Where is this man? Ah, oh, whatever. We'll give that, we'll give that mission another shot. I mm, might have to, well, it's not a gun, so maybe the flamethrower is okay. I don't know. Uh, I feel like I'm really stretching it. <laughs> Oh, there's one. Mm. I don't have a second holster. I'll come back. That's a lot of weed. We'll just use the flamethrower for this mission because it's kind of hard without it. Oh, that's right. It's got a long reload animation. You can't interrupt any part of it. Step was really popular. I think Borderlands 2 came out around the same time period as this did. You remember that? They were really proud of that dubstep in that game. It's just a thing. Everyone was about the wub wub, I remember that. Fun whenever you get to play a mission, you can tell the developers really had fun making it. Like, like with the with the way the your vision screws around and then the, like the saturation gets really high. <laughs> Where are you going? It's fine. This doesn't cause a gun, right? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, it's not like I was taking the... wasn't taking the idea of the challenge run too seriously anyway. Oh, 
This is a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, guess I gotta do it. That's one down. That's it. I'm out of here. All right, all right. Uh, I abstain from the challenge for one mission. We'll use the. Well, we're gonna go back to the bow. I swear. <laughs> I do like this mission quite a bit. The burning people to death is very enjoyable. <laughs> I, if I was a little quiet there, it's because I kind of got engrossed in the in the whole. It, it's fun, isn't it? The whole <laughs> just kind of like you know, you hold the trigger, you see the jet of flame exit out, and then someone's screaming on the other end. It's powerful. Please don't report me. <laughs> Oh my god, I have explosive arrows. Oh, baby. Okay. 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 Now we're playing. Now we're, now we're playing the game. Okay, okay. Here on out. Here on out. Just the bow. I swear. I swear. Doesn't actually mean much, but I swear. Where? Oh no, my bow disappeared. Where, where am I gonna grab Willis? I guess we'll go over here. At the very least, I'm going to take all the outposts with just a bow. Specials. Whip. Yeah. Yeah, the flare gun. Well, we'll, we'll, have, we'll, we'll just make it the flare gun. I, I think if I get a second weapon, it'll be the flare gun. There's a there's an auto cross in uh, Far Cry 4, which I think is a handheld self-loading crossbow, which is kind of neat. Uh, it's not very powerful, but it uh, it does it does do the job. Oy. Special arrows. <laughs> I I forgot that you got special. I, I I didn't realize you got explosive arrows this early. I thought I thought I thought you wouldn't get them until like the second half of the game. But hey, I'm I'm not turning them down. I love the flamethrower. I I also love the flamethrower. What can I say? They know how to light stuff on fire. Got you near peace. Thanks. Hey, you ever go out on recon with your guys? There's a reason I have the American flag in here. In here, <laughs> there's society, there's order out there. This is an interesting point Willis makes, because it's like, uh, like he's 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 aggressive American bravado, right? I think that's part of why he like in his head tries to get as insanely American as possible to like remind him of where he what he um where he came from. Because like everyone else out in the islands, they're kind of nuts, right? That like that's a that's an understatement, but like they all they're all kind of like fully like. I think Hoyt would have been a better character if it made him a lot colder. Because they they had um they had full berserker rage barbarian mode um with like a lot of the characters in this game already. I feel like if Hoyt was like a very a very separated, cold, like objective materialistic kind of brutality, I think he would have been a more effective antagonist. Like, if you met him and he was just, like, like you just, you just saw him tabulating numbers from selling humans or something like that. <laughs> like, like, I feel like if you had, like, a cutscene where you met him and he's, like, he's, he's like, running the numbers on a person. He's like, yeah, is this person worth more for the ransom or should I just chop up their organs? Or just chop them up and sell their organs? Would that be worth more? My name is Jackie. 
I'm a weapons dealer. Nobody believes me, but they blew up my boat. But I survived. Okay, yeah, that's the thing I was talking about, the crazy woman. She calls herself the Jackal, and she's a weapons dealer. That's a reference to Far Cry 2. I mean, Far Cry 2 and 3 got the feeling. Or at least they established what I thought the game the game series was supposed to be about. Far Cry, um... Far Cry 4 did a little bit of it. I feel like Far Cry 4, 5, and 6 kind of went off on their own, because those started being about revolutions instead of about, like, the, uh, the, the inherent wilderness, like, that lays inside the heart of man. And I think for that reason, they, uh, I, they lost me a little bit. Because the thing about, the thing about, uh, what is it? The thing about, um, Far Cry 3 is that there's no good guys in this game, pretty much. Like, everyone's doing, everyone's engaging in, like, the same sort of issue that everyone else is a part of. Everyone's dealing with, uh, everyone's, everyone's, like, uh, everyone's taking in, like, uh, like, you know... Everyone's kind of taking in some measure of insanity and like facilitating it. Like they're 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 taking part in the violence and the in the drug trade and the the cyclical nature of everything. Like they're all like like the the sort of degeneration of society and like the 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 rampant bloodshed. Like everyone everyone's kind of part of it except for Jason's little circle of friends in the cave. Like Dr. Earnhardt, he sells he sells drugs to everyone else which like you know facilitates the, uh, which kind of pushes them all towards, like, the sort of, like, mental state that everyone's in, so he's also part of it, despite how peaceful he might seem, so, like, the whole, like, everyone's involved in it, and it's, uh, it's, like, when you get to, like, Far Cry 4 and 5, it seems less about that, because, like, Far Cry 4, everyone's very, like, sane. They're just kind of, uh, like, everyone's a little crazy, like, they've got a little bit of that going on, but, like, the society's still, like, relatively established. You're just kind of dealing with, uh, you're dealing with one crazy person who's the king, kind of keeping, control, like, control over a kingdom. And I don't think, I don't think they, like, uh, I don't think they did the best job when it came to, uh, when it came to establishing how the, like, the other parts of, like, the world, like, this, like, the, what was it, the, the Kairatian, like, uh, like, uh, culture that, like, caused, that, that would, that would cause, like, pagan men to think that his way was the only way. I don't think they expanded on that enough. And then you've got, uh... Wait, what else? You've got uh, Far Cry 5, which was just, you know, there's a cult. The cult's crazy. Everyone on your side, everyone's normal. <laughs> it's just the cult that's bad. Bad, bad cult. And then, like, the cult is very, very bad. They're, like, cartoonishly evil. And then, like, the way the, the, way the whole thing, like, develops, it's just kind of... I don't think it was very good. I think they tried to do something, and they did not succeed with Far Cry 5. Um, I don't want to say too much, because we might end up playing that game on this, uh, on this channel, but... Uh, I just didn't feel like they quite made it. Far Cry 6, from what little I played, just did not appeal to me. It seemed like it kind of... How would I put this? It feels like Far Cry's been boiled down to a few basic... Um, to a few basic components that, like, I feel like are ultimately missing the point. Or the point that I got from Far Cry 2 and 3 that I think... Uh, I think got lost along the way, which is like, oh, there's some sort of, they, like, they got really enamored with the idea of having, like, a big, scary antagonist that's, like, oppressing the people, you know? And that's not, that's not really what Far Cry 2 or 3 are about, because, like, Far Cry 3, you're playing it so far, it's like, oh, yeah, you need to... You need to, you, like, 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 Voss and Hoyt have, like, a grip on the island, and they're obviously doing, like, very bad things, but, like, the, the tribal society that you're supporting is also, like, not, they're not good either, like, they have their own brand of savagery that's, like, not, that's, uh, that's ultimately destructive, that you do take part in and facilitate, because at first it's, like, because you're, it's because you're, like, there are means to the end, and then later it's, like, you, like, Jason gets, like, thrown into it, and this is presented negatively. Uh, and it's like, uh, but like in Far Cry 6, instead it's like, oh yeah, you're a good, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's an evil king, and he's really good, like, the, the, he has these really cool, like, Giancarlo Esposito obviously is really good at his job, which is being really, like, sinister, but, um, I don't know, I don't know what to say, he's like, uh, 
That's kind of the main thing. You don't get the sense of like, uh, oh, the gorillas are like, they, like they're not, they're not crazy. They're not sad. They, they aren't engaged in savagery. They're like, they're obviously engaged in a very like, they're they're engaged in asymmetrical warfare and they do some weird stuff. But like, they're not. I'm not getting the sense that I am in. I'm not getting the sense that I'm in the. Uh, I'm in like the. I'm not getting the sense that I'm in like a like I, I I'm like out of my out of my place. I'm out of my uh I'm out of the land I, I'm familiar with. Cause like like the main character uh is in, in Far Cry six is like part of the society that he's trying to work with. And as a result, he it doesn't really feel like it's a far cry. Cause the reason they call it far cry is because you're a far cry from like uh, civilization, from the from lands from lands that are like uh, subject to like society and societal laws. Whereas, and then like like by separating yourself from that, like you're like isolating yourself from things that are familiar and entering a land where things are uh, in, in in like much more. Savage, I guess, and uh, Far Cry 6 does not, it, it just doesn't have any of that at all. I don't know, that was a long, that was a long rant, but basically what I'm saying is that Far Cry 6 doesn't, it's just, it just doesn't feel like it's got the same ideas or themes that, like, were consistent with Far Cry for a while. I don't know if that's just me, but that's, that's how I feel. Actually, no, I'm not going to pick up the flurry gun. I'm just going to stick to the bow. Like, I feel like in Far Cry 6, the psychological part of it's just completely gone. It was really weak in Far Cry 5 because you didn't really have a main character. Like, your main character is uh, silent, like, completely silent. So he, uh, he or she, they, um, they aren't really... Um, they aren't really a good indication of like uh, what's going on with you as a as a as a character because like th things just kind of happen to them and then they don't really react to it and then other characters are like oh wow you got really fucked up and then they don't no one no one comments on it so that that's part of that's part of why I think all the cutscenes in Far Cry Five really suck because they're just monologues they're just characters getting like full freedom to say oh my god like look at you you're so violent look at what's around don't you get that we're right we're right we're right. we have to be right do you have to admit that we're right right and then your character doesn't say anything they're like of course we're right so why are you why are you fighting so much why are you resisting our attempts to graciously save everyone and meanwhile and then like after the cutscene you fight them and go back to the part where um, all of the and go back Back to like dealing with the fact that the um, cult is uh, executing random civilians, kidnapping people, uh, hanging people by billboards, um, nailing them to crosses, yada yada yada. And then like you do that until you get another cutscene where they try to where the the cult leaders try to convince you that they're doing something benevolent, and it's like a whole thing. And I got I got I got really annoyed with it. And then I got to the ending, and I got really really annoyed because. Um, I'm just gonna spoil the ending for Far Cry 5, like, so skip 10 minutes if you want to, uh, if you want to avoid that, but, like, in Far Cry 5, the way, the way the ending works is that, so the, so Far Cry 5 is a, is a, an apocalyptic cult, right? Like, they're, uh, it's very Book of Revelations is, like, a big thing. A little too close. But uh, the big issue with them is that uh, the big issue with them is that they think the world's gonna end, and this was because Far Cry Five came out in a, t in a time period where, um, like, the tensions for the tensions for uh, a lot a lot of things were happening in the real world that kind of had people thinking that uh, that had people thinking that like uh, things were gonna get worse and things were getting bad, and, and it did it did get pretty bad, but uh, like. After, at, at the end of the game, uh, it turns out that they were 100%, the cult was 100% right, and then the, the world gets nuked. And then, like, th this is in the Resist ending, which feels like it's the real ending, since they made a whole-ass fucking standalone DLC that was following up on that ending. Let's test out this explosive arrow. Oh my god. Anywho... Uh Yeah, but like the fact that they they made that the ending after you're doing this whole thing where the cult's like, "Oh, why are you resisting us? Weren't like we were right the whole time and then they turn out to be right the whole time." Is like I think it's so stupid. <laughs> 
Because it's like, oh, what am I supposed to take away from this? If someone takes over my whole town because they think, like, you know, they think everything going bad is a sign that we should, like, bunker down and, like, uh, submit to, like, uh, this whole cult ideology, like, in order to... I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll talk more about it, I guess, when we're playing Far Cry 5, but I think it's a really stupid thing to say, and I think it's a really... I think it's a really asinine way to end the, that story. God damn. Did you see that guy with the sniper rifle shoot me through a hill? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I have a lot to say about Far Cry 5's ending because uh, I had a... I, like, when it happened, when I played the game and, uh, and uh, finished it, I uh, I literally, like, found a friend of mine and ranted at him for an hour and a half about how much I fucking hated it uh, in Discord. And, like, I guess it shows that it's worth talking- I guess it shows that it's evocative, at least, because it got me talking about it, but I don't think that's, like, enough to say that it's a good or worthwhile ending. Because then my main talking point was, why the fuck would they waste my time like this? I don't know. There's a lot of- a lot of hopeless games came out in, like, the past couple of years, and I understand why people had that mentality, but I don't think- I don't think that's something you really should fixate on, especially if you're creating a story that a lot of people are going to be reading, because you're kind of feeding into a mentality that's ultimately destructive, and I don't think supporting that's good. Mark this guy? Not happening. I shouldn't have made that whole search. Have fun with that leopard, fellas. Keep your eyes open. Just take care of myself. <laughs> Is that it? That's everybody. Hell yeah. Alright, but, uh, yeah. I don't know. If I play Far Cry 5, I'll have fun with it, but I'll just complain about the story the whole fucking time. I, I started replaying the game a little bit recently, and I had to stop it because, um... I was starting to run into, like, unskippable, uh, unskippable cutscenes, and I just... I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of unskippable cutscenes, especially if I... Not just... I'm not just... Like, it's one thing if you're ambivalent to the story, but if you actively hate it, that's different. I don't know. Disgusting. This might make me a little, like, I don't know if this is a... Cause, cause I remember looking up, like, other people's opinions on this ending because I want to see what they, they thought of it, and I feel like the only reason people were praising it was because it was different than what they expected. And I feel like a... I, I can understand wanting, like, going like, oh, yeah, I want... I, I'm tired of all these endings being the same. Like, I don't want it to be something I expect. I really respect them for doing something different, yada, yada, yada. And, like, I, I get that, but it's, like... You need to do more than that. You need to have a higher- I feel like- I feel like- I feel like a higher standard than that is warranted. Like, the- it's not- I don't care if the ending, like- Like, I don't mind a bad ending if it feels meaningful or earned, but, like, if the ending just comes out of nowhere and slaps you in the fucking dick, I don't think that's valuable on its own. And I feel like a lot of people- Not a lot of people, but I feel like I've been running into endings like that, um, like, not infrequently, where they, um- You've got an issue, and it's like, uh... 
I, I feel like I've been running into endings where people just kind of made them bad just to go like, ha, you expected something, you expected something different to happen, didn't you? And it's just like, why? Like, <laughs> that's like, that's like, uh, that's like going, oh, I'm going to serve you some food and then, uh, serving them shit on a platter and going, you didn't expect that, did you? Like, you know, you re you'll, you'll remember that meal now because you didn't expect that. And I'm going like, yeah, but I'll remember it because it was shit. <laughs> like... It'll be a funny story to tell people, I guess, but like, I'm not, it's not, it's not an experience I'm going to enjoy, and it's not what I came for, so ultimately it's, it is like a waste of my time and money. That's why, that's why it stands out. Like, you can have, you can give me a bad ending, but if the bad, but the bad ending needs to be something. Like, it needs to be worth something. Like, what did I get out of it? Like, uh, The Stranger, you could argue, ends, like, with, like, the ending is definitely not, I wouldn't call it good by any measure, but, like, it's part of, like, the whole book is trying to say something, and, like, that's all part of it. Like, it's an appropriate ending for how it ends. Like, Last of Us Part 1, Last of Us Part 1 has a really audacious ending, or not really, really audacious, but it has an ending that definitely isn't typical, and it earns it because it builds it up over like like the entire game is spent building up and supporting the character traits that like that ending would require and i think that's like i think that's part of the effort that a story requires in order to make something happen like it's good that's a, that's what makes a good ending you build up to it but like uh you have to do that if you want it to be worth a damn if you ask me Oh, nice, I got two. I don't know. Every time every time I think about Far Cry 5's ending, I just want to rant about it, about how bad it is. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not, I'm not huge on it. I know there's, like, actually three endings, but, like, two of them I think don't. I, I'm just, I just straight up don't think they count. Because, like, there's only one, because Far Cry New Dawn... Honestly, is the ending of Far Cry 5 really that big of a spoiler? Because Far Cry New Dawn came out. Like, you have to know. You have to know. That's a lot of dogs. <laughs> One thing I do miss about this game, because uh, I'm not, I can't do it this playthrough, is... Uh, I miss being able to, uh, I miss being able to use the 1887, because that, that's a really good shotgun. It's, like, inordinately good for no reason. Like, you can use that thing throughout the entire game, and it, it, it doesn't even, I don't even feel like it falls off at any point, because it's got, like, a bizarrely, like, wide spread, but it's deadly for, like, the whole spread. I kind of feel bad. I think about killing like a lot of dogs. Like I get, I get that the dogs belong to pirates, so like you know, it's probably it's not like like it's me or them, but still. What you throwing that at, buddy? All right, we're clear. Is that undetected? No. Oh, it was! Cool. I thought one of the dogs detected me, but I guess that didn't count. That's 14 of 34 outposts with just the bow and my machete, mostly. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. It's like, uh, what was it? Far Cry 4 also had an ending. The thing about Far Cry 4 is that it does kind of build up to it. Like, it, 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 it does do a whole, like, damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. And I didn't really like Ajay as much as I... Like, I... Th People, people complain about Jason Brody, but I feel like the main reason was because they find, like, they kind of have preconceived, uh, they have a preconceived, like, annoyance with uh, certain types of people that Jason falls into. And, like, that's the, I feel like that's a sign that Jason was exactly the kind of person the developers wanted him to be. Because Jason's like a, Jason's like a California fuckboy, pretty much. Like, he has the haircut that they all had, like, during that, t during, like, like, uh, like, uh, like, ten or so years ago. And, uh, he also just, um... He's also just kind of like, cause he, he he would just like ride around and like uh, he he did a bunch of like uh, he would just ride around and like you know on hang gliders and stuff like that. And the whole reason he's in the Rook Islands was cause he and his friends decided to go nuts and go on like some crazy vacation and party and drink and yada yada yada. Like exactly what you expect of those like types of people. And like the whole idea is that now that he's here, he's like someone else, and like he's kind of engaged. Like he used to be like this sort of like inconsequential like party dude without really much going on in his life, not really thinking about what's ahead, just kind of doing, doing what he wants. And then now that he's here, he's like alive for a, a whole different reason. Like that's why he's so enamored with the idea of being like a like this like tribal warrior badass, because now he's doing something that feels more real and more present than he ever has. Like, uh, and as a result, he, uh, and as a, re and, and it does, like, feed into that sort of, like, thrill-seeking daredevil part of, like, his, uh, his personality. So, like, it makes sense, and, like, it, it worked as a character, and, like, he talks a lot, and I think that does help show you, like, like, what his whole situation is. I feel like they could have done it better, but, um, like, it's still, it was still good. It was still effective for what it was. Like, he, he's a character that has an arc. He goes from point A to point B, and then as he goes from point A to point B, you learn something about him and maybe about people in general. That's good. That's really good. Uh, for video games, that's really good. Usually they don't have that. <laughs> and then in Far Cry 4, it's like... In Far Cry 4, I feel like they just didn't do that, you know? Because Ajay barely talks. He barely talks. And, like, the the bad part of, like, the endings... Because, like, the way Far Cry 4 works is that there's two, there's two leaders for the Golden Path. One of them's a... Uh... Oh, shit. Uh, but, um, there's two, they, there's two guys, I don't remember their fucking names, there's a girl and a guy, the girl wants to take, uh, take over Pagan Men's whole drug operation, and, uh, wants to take over, uh, Pagan Men's old, Pagan Men's the big bad guy, the king dude, and she wants to take over his whole operation, and, um, make him into, and, like, take it over, and then, like, try to, like, modernize, uh, Kairat as a country. Uh, other guy wants to do the exact opposite. He wants to, uh, he wants to, like, like, re-secure, he wants to return the, um, he wants to return Kairat to, like, its roots, I guess, and then, like, uh, engage in, like, a whole, like, I guess, like, turn it into, like, a theocratic, uh, Turn into like a religious theocracy, and then like that does incorporate that does involve him marrying like a a, a girl that's like I think like like a preteen or something. Pretty bad, but uh, it's a. Uh... There's no right answers. There's no right answers. The closest thing you could get to a good ending would be, like, you kill all of them. But, uh, that, they don't really have an ending for that. It's just kind of implied that, I guess, like, Aji takes over. But, like, well, no, the best good ending is to not do anything. It's to, like, you just stay. And then, like, uh... Okay, Rongo, you're bumping me and that's fucking up my aim. But, uh, it's, like... That's kind of a nothing ending, you know? Because <laughs> it kind of precludes the act of, like, entering the area. Like, it's... I don't know. I think that's a cheap way to get a dig at the at the, at the the player. To go, oh yeah, the real, the real best ending is to not do anything at all. To not do all of this video game shit. I don't know. It's, it, it's annoying. This would be easier if Rongo wasn't super determined to get himself killed. Come on. 
Now these arrows are so slow. Not of arrows, we need to get them back. There we go. Come on, pop up, pop up. God damn it. I like how one fire arrow sometimes barely like gets any distance and sometimes it just blows up multiple buildings. Just catches an entire forest on fire. Over here? Yep. Whenever I like take down someone and I want to do the, I want to do the throwing knife one. I wait. Where's Rongo? Why is there a timer? Take this guy to the village and you have a chance to save Oliver. Bro, move, move, move! Are you are you scared of the dude that's like on the other side of like all three of these houses? Come on. What are you pointing at? Are you afraid of the fire? It's gonna be an issue if you want to ride with me. <laughs> Let's go. You gotta be fast if you want to make it here, man. But I hate escort missions <laughs> so much. I know that's a stereotypical gamer thing to say, but god, I hate them. There's a reason for it, you know? Come on, Rongo. Oh god, I have to secure the place, and there's no arrows. Fire. Yeehaw. He, he just blasted me straight on with the, the shotgun. Didn't matter. This is a bit of a mess, but it's working. Demolishing the entire village, but my man is protected, and that's what matters. Fire! These are these grenades are heavy. There's a guy somewhere out there, and I have no idea like where he is. Buddy. One thing I kind of like about Far Cry 4 is that if you're running up to someone to take down them, they start going, no, 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 and right before you stab them. Hey, come here. It's as funny as it sounds. Hey, come here. 
Oh, you're gonna bug the shit out of me while I'm looting these guys, aren't you? Oh, there's a whole pile of dudes here. I'm not using their stuff, and I want it. Have some patience. I just killed a lot of men for your sake. Hey, come here. Alright, alright, what do you want? Okay, okay, it's okay. Come in. Pot in I the found it. I found the transportation manifest. Excellent. I can totally read this. Great. Finally. I'll take a picture of What's the revol what's the resolution on these papers? Like 120p? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> now it's gonna be even worse. Willis, you got the picture? The pirates use codes Neanderthals can read. Oliver is being transported on the old road. I've set the decrypted coordinates. Good! I'm on my way! <sighs> nice. Okay, Oliver's gonna have to be another gun mission, because I think you I think you operate a mounted gun while you're helping him out. The game kinda locks you into it. One thing, one thing about, one thing I really hate in games, it's not as, it's not that bad in, like, this game. It's not, uh, the, it's not, it's not this game's fault that I'm mentioning it, but one thing I really hate in games in general is when they, like, lock you into a certain gameplay style or, like, a certain, like, rhythm. I, I know that, I know that it's, like, warranted in a lot of games, in some games, but I feel like if a game gives you opportunity, like, gives you a lot of gameplay options, but then expects you to use certain ones in certain circumstances, I get a little annoyed. Um... And the reason, I, I mentioned this specifically because uh, it was an issue for me when I was playing um, Doom Eternal. Because in Doom 2016, I felt like I had a bit more opportunity to, like, mix and match the weapons I was using for the situations that I that I was, I had. And it didn't, it, it didn't feel like it kind of, it didn't really feel like it mattered as much for, uh... It didn't feel like as much of an issue when I, uh, like, uh, when I would use, like, certain, like, whatever weapon to kill, like, a big enemy or something like that. But in, um, in Doom Eternal, they basically baked in specific, specific weaknesses and specific intended weapons that you're supposed to use for specific enemies. And while that's not a huge problem, it definitely wasn't what I wanted. It was like, uh, how, how, how do I say this? It, it was like, uh, it was like they were pigeonholing me into playing the game a certain way, and that was, uh, it felt maladaptive to me, just because I was like, uh, I really liked, um, I really liked just kind of running around and not thinking as much, I guess, and, uh, the game started, they started punishing that in Doom Eternal, and I feel like that kind of sucked. Like I get, I, I get that it's part of like people were describing it as like it's like uh, it's like shooter devil may cry and like I get I guess that I guess there's appeal for that and I, I respect that but I just don't I it's just, that's not the kind of game I wanted I wanted like a full like berserker rage shooter where I can run around and like there's skill to it obviously but like I wanted to be able to just completely like balls to the wall just go nuts but if the game's telling me oh you have to use this gun for this guy this gun for this guy I have to I have to start playing like a little bit more specifically than I want to uh, it was it was kind of annoying there's also like a ton of they give you a ton of tools in that game and they all have their own specific utility that they, you have to use at different times so like it took a while to get used to no, but those weren't my main complaints about that game. My biggest issue with that game was the fact that they made the levels way too fucking long. <laughs> that was the big one. Because in Doom 2016, you can slam through a level in like 20 to 30 minutes, and that was perfect. That was... That was... Perfect. And it was, uh... It was like... You could, you could get through a game 20 to 30 minutes. That meant you could sit down, just go full, like, manic monkey mode, and just, like, yell at a screen while ripping demons to shreds for a bit, and then, like, go on with your day. And that is exactly what I wanted from that game. Doom Eternal's like, no, you're sitting down for, like, a full setting. Like, you have to sit down for two hours, otherwise you're gonna have to drop this mission, like, partway through, and that's just gonna feel weird. I was not a fan of that. That was not what I wanted. I don't know. I I like I like Doom Eternal, but I didn't finish it because it wasn't it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I like Doom 2016 a lot. I played that game through twice. I like that game a lot. Might play that on the on the might play that on the channel at some point. I don't know, I mentioned that because it does feel like sometimes this game and like Far Cry in general do try to like give you like a sense of like Rambo Berserker rage, and I feel like that's a really that's a really good feeling the channel for a video game, you know? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, another thing they changed for Far Cry 6 was the healing system, which took a lot to get used to. They have this weird thing where you have a certain amount of, like, you don't you don't use med kits anymore, you just have a certain amount of heals, and that includes first aid, and then they just removed the, your ability to do first aid on yourself when you were low but didn't have any healing, which I thought was kind of lame. Like, they still have the animations, and they have this really cool one where you puff on a cigar and then use it to, like, cauterize a wound, which I thought was very cool, but, like... The, the the fact that you just can't do it as much was kind of kind of sucked. It felt like they were trying to make Far Cry into more of a tactical shooter instead of like a run and gun Rambo thing, and then that kind of I don't know. It, it was like uh, I feel like they I feel like they kind of half-assed it and they didn't make it like quite they didn't they didn't quite get the feeling that I wanted them to. Uh, Far Cry's Far Cry's weird. One thing I do miss that they added in Far Cry 4 was grappling. I, I liked uh, the, the grappling hook thing. I think that was really very nice. Ugh. I'm feeling pretty good today. Like, I've got energy. I got like a full night of sleep or something, I guess. Or well, also the caffeine's running through my veins. So I drank a diet a Coke Zero, and I, I don't know, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how you guys feel after drinking a Coke Zero, but I get that 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 shit does me just fine. I get wired up. I had a time once where uh, I mentioned I was caffeine sensitive once upon a time. I think uh, I had a, I had a time once where I wanted to try black coffee, and I knew my parents had like a coffee machine, so I got one of their. Uh, I got one of their cups and like put it in, did the whole thing, brewed a cup of black coffee. I didn't know what to add to it, so I just had I just I just made it black coffee. Interesting. But uh I like can I like there we go. Um, but, like, after I drank, I drank the full cup of black coffee, I was like, I don't really feel it, and then, like, 30 minutes later, I was so jittery, I couldn't fucking, I couldn't, I couldn't sit still. Like, I, ha I had to walk, I had, like, I, I was, like, walking, I was pacing back and forth through, uh, my, my house, and, uh, just, I was pacing back and forth through the house, and then, like, um, ended up, uh, and then ended up just kind of wandering for, like, a little while, and then eventually, uh, Eventually, like, the, the high wore off, and the crash was so bad, I took a nap for, like, two and a half hours. I, 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 I have not drunk, like, a full cup of coffee since. It made for an interesting contrast, because I, I, I hung out with a friend once, where he, uh, he, he's, like, a really big guy, and he drinks a lot of coffee, so, at, like, and his, so his tolerance is up. So he, he, he can fill up a full, like, liter-tall thermos of coffee, and then that's what it takes to get him going in, like, the morning. But like I had one time where I was hanging out with him uh, at night, and uh, I was I was starting to get kind of exhausted. Like uh, I felt uh, like I had some fatigue going on, and as a result, didn't really um. I had some fatigue going on, and as a result, didn't really uh, like wasn't really paying attention. I was like, man, I'm like falling asleep at your desk. Like he could literally see me nodding off. And he's like, all right, and he made like a, me a, like a little tea saucer of coffee because like he was like, you want some coffee? And I was like, yeah, just a little bit though. And then. Uh, with that little tea saucer, I, like, sipped it, and then, like, after, like, after, after 20 minutes, I was good to go. I was completely awake. And he was like, wow, that's, that's, that's intense. Because <laughs> I, I don't think he had, like, a full perspective on how, like, how, how, how quickly coffee works on me until then. Or, like, how, how potent coffee is for me until then. I'm pretty sure if I, I'm pretty sure if I drank, like, a cup, a can of, Bang or like monster or something, I would probably die. It definitely wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> die is probably like a like an exaggeration, but I definitely get those heart palpitations. I'd, I'd feel like I was dying probably. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't I don't make a habit of drinking uh, caffeine. I am I try to be careful with like uh, caffeinated soda. I try not to drink like more than one a day and not and like I I get a little. I try- I don't want to do it, like, more than, like, once a- like, like, I don't want to do it more than once a day, like, two days in a row, especially. Like, cause I had a time where I drank a bunch of Diet Coke. Like, just- I was, like, addicted to it, I think. I, like, just- I would just, like- I would have, like, two or three, like, every single day. 
and I noticed that I, I noticed that I was getting like I was getting jitters, right? Because there's a thing where you drink too much caffeine and you get like addicted to it, and your your body has a habit for it, and like it, my eyelid would start twitching <laughs> from like two diet cokes, and uh, that was that was kind of a sign that I should I should calm down with it. I stopped I stopped drinking so much of it, and honestly, I feel great. <laughs> Felt a lot better. Turns out, uh, regular exercise, r lots of water, and eight hours of sleep is all you actually need to stay awake. Fun fact for all of you. That's another. That's another reason why I try to schedule myself pretty tightly. Cause I need. I need like a full. I need a full night of like preparing to sleep and then sleeping. Like I can fall asleep pretty easily, but I need. I need to make sure I get a full night of rest. Cause otherwise, I'm just. I'm gonna be miserable the next day, and there's not gonna be anything I can do about it. I hate it here. Is that all of them? Wow. Yeah, this boat, I'm getting used to it. It's pretty good. <laughs> I really like using bows and shooters, cause like a lot of the times when you have a when you have like a slow high damage weapon, it's like uh, you have the hit first and then the the recharge afterwards. Like say you've got a bolt action, it's shoot and then you work the bolt, right? Um, and with the bow, what makes them interesting is that it's inverted. So you've got the you've got the preparation for the shot first, and then you've got the the actual shooting action like afterwards. Who's the man? And I think that's uh, I think that's interesting. Okay, I think yeah no no I've got time I've got energy. I was uh, I was flagging pretty badly like going into it like yesterday, but that was mostly because I had I I, I was playing I, I didn't realize it at first, but I was playing Hard West way longer than I thought I would be. Like normally I only stream for like a couple hours to like two at most. I think my stamina is starting to come up because we're coming up on two hours and I don't feel that bad right now. But uh, I think I think I I think I hit like four hours by the time we were done uh, yesterday, and I, I realized that that was why I was like barely talking and like kind of kind of starting to like fall out of it yesterday. Because <laughs> I was like, damn, I haven't done anything but play this video game like literally all day. No wonder I feel kind of like trash. <laughs> Oh, I'm yawning, so I'm not, I'm not that awake, I guess. I'm gonna check something really quick. Okay, sorry. Sorry about the repeat there. I just, I just realized. I know it's a little late because it's like two hours in, but uh, I realized that yesterday I was like, I wasn't getting any game or me sounds, so I wanted to double check through uh, OBS. But I think we're fine. That's the trouble with being a smaller streamer. You don't have people in your chat to like tell you if something's obviously wrong. Like if I was, if I was bigger, like one of those, uh, one of those actual like mainstream streamers that have been doing it for a while, or like. I was with a company that had, like, groundswell. Or if I was both. Like, uh, it'd be, uh... I'd have, like, a whole army of people to be like, YOU'RE MUTED! And then I'd be panicking, which would be, I guess, the opposite problem, but, like... At least I'd know. I've had, I've had, like, uh, I've had times where, like, I had a whole, a whole stream. I did a whole stream, and then it just... Turns out it was... Turns out the whole situation was fucked, and no one ever told me. Where did this dog come from? 
Okay, this thing's just not responding to my arrows, apparently. I got the quivers. Five arrows was really not it. Very casual about these outposts now. <laughs> I do feel like they made the, hard, the Far Cry games a little bit harder as time went on, because Far Cry 5 is not, like... Depending on how willing you are to do certain things, it can get kind of difficult if you start picking up, like, um... If you, if you, if you restrict yourself like I was. Like, the, the, the cowboy run in that game is actually rather difficult, because uh, I don't think Far Cry is designed very well for, like, slow single-shot weapons. Or at least Far Cry 5 isn't, because, like, they... they in the in the big like uh like end like end of end of the section missions in that game, uh the enemies are very uh there's a lot of them and uh, they'll they'll swamp you with special types all the time, and that means uh, you kind of need something with a bit more like fire with with like more fire rate. Uh, so that makes the that makes um your that makes uh my tendency to make my soul weapon the uh the, the lever action rifle a little bit difficult. Sometimes you just don't have time to, like, reload that gun. <laughs> How many... How does it take to get a... I need another leopard skin, that's what I need. What should I, like, summon a car? Right, I still have this... that stupid thing. Just a pleasant drive through the countryside. Nothing, nothing concerning on my mind. This way? Yeah. This is such a weird game series. I have such a love-hate relationship with it. Just like I do with like a lot of Ubisoft properties. Uh, Ubisoft acquired, or like, they have a lot of, they, they have a lot of IPs that I think are really cool, they just like, I just feel like they haven't, um, I just feel like they're always very hit or miss with a lot of them. And, uh, I feel like, I feel like after they kind of consolidated all of their games towards like, one general, uh, style. Like, I, everyone, everyone knows about the whole thing with, uh, Ubisoft and going like, oh, hey, we, uh, we make, uh, we're, we're, we just make open world games with towers that you climb now. Like, I remember, I remember when, uh, people started making fun of them for that, because it was, it was, it was really noticeable, like, how consistent they were with that, because it's like, what was it, Assassin's Creed, uh, Far Cry, what was the other one? There was, like, one other series that had, like, a lot of towers. Might be wrong, but it was definitely at least two, which is more than it should have been. But there was a, there was a lot of tower climbing. I should have grabbed that fucking vehicle. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop after this mission. I'm starting to I'm starting to come down. I think from the from the caffeine. But uh, there's a what is it? Uh, 
I don't know. It, it's just you, that, that's just Ubisoft. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm kind of in a weird spot game wise right now because it feels like everyone slowed down on development, and I think they're I think we're starting to come out of it, but uh, they. Uh, I feel like we start we're starting to come out of it, but like uh, we're it's still. I'm st I've still been stuck recently, just kind of playing the same things over and over again. Yep, you have to use a sniper rifle for this part. Where's Oliver? I better wait until I see him. Oh. Yes, he's 731. He's got uh he's got VIP transportation. Got a lot of dudes. There he is. <laughs> He's walking awful casual for being a prisoner. <laughs> Jitter a little bit. Oh god. Oh god, they're having a mating dance. That's why they're vibrating. Oh. See, the dominant male is forcing the other one to assume the position before they commence the ritual. Can't let them put Ollie in the chopper. How am I supposed to hit this man? Vibrating in place. His corks are. Nope. Got him. Wait, is this thing hit scan? Oh, it is. Hell yeah. I think it's big. Keep moving. Oliver is shooting a gun. I don't believe it. When you see how this guy acts, you'll be surprised that he managed to pick up a gun and fight people. <laughs> Nice explosion. Oh. Keep narrowly missing these guys. Steal the boat. One thing they did really good in this game is making the enemies run around like a bunch of maniacs. So I feel like in an actual, I feel like in an actual uh, fight, like that's that's what a. Uh, that's how people would act. <laughs> like in an actual gunfight, people would be running around and like jittering around and trying to keep their heads down. Hey, thanks for saving me. That was not really the time, man. Let's get out of here. Uh yeah, and I have to use a yeah, that, I was I was right, you do have to use a mount of machine gun for this. Keep the boat straight. Oh, this rain is this rain is killing my frames. If you guys want like an actual like breakdown of this game, uh, Pyrocynical, who, despite normally being kind of a, never mind, uh, he, he actually does it. He actually does a pretty good job of breaking this game down over like a very exhaustive couple hour video. So you you, you wanna you wanna know everything there probably is to know about Far Cry 3. There's there's that. There's also a video by uh, what is it, Faceful of Eyes, who does very good like aesthetically focused um, uh, videos on shooters. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like his work is very, uh, you know, uh, your mileage may vary, but, uh, if you, it's, it's pretty good. 
he goes really deep. Um, basically about as deep as a person could, I feel, with games like these. And uh, I feel like if you want to learn a bit more um, about like how the game... Like like the the the, the less direct aspects of this game's storytelling, you'll um, that that that's a good way to do it. Shit, dude, helicopter. Is that it? That's everything. Hell yeah. We did it. She saved me. And they're putting the screws to my dad. He was about to give them a ton of money. Holly, you would have been sold right into slavery afterward, even if he paid. Yep. This is some heavy they were gonna shit, double man. dip you, bro. That's that's business out here. You're stronger than you think. Come with me. Someplace safe to hide you. Dude, I'd be so fucking weirded out if I was being captured and ransomed by pirates and then like uh like my friend who I, I have only seen like partying and taking double shots at like nightclubs just came in and fucking killed like 20 people and then like m mounted a machine gun and then just fucking took down a char chopper. I'd be that'd be nuts. <laughs> This is like heaven. Hey Jason, when you have a sec, can you come over here? I have something to show you. Bro, I, I totally forgot to about, about Lisa. <laughs> hey, I'm building a cross for Grant. Hey, yep. Thanks. Very nice. We have, time. We have to talk. Grant's body is probably completely disintegrated and being digested by an, an animal or something, but, you know, it's good to have the cross, I guess. I'm not carrying a lot of these... I'm not carrying all these weapons. I've got one bow. Come on. Yeah, there it is. I'm taking control of my life for the first time. Well, I, I know people didn't like Jason because he came across as a bit of a fuckhead, but that's like the point. This is my path. I've got to find it on my own. Okay. Like, he is a very immature person, and that's part of what drives his character arc. I love you. Now go. I'm gonna try and stop you again. Like, that's why Citra's able to get, like, control over him, you know? Oh yeah, there's a thing here. I'm not gonna do it, but if you uh, if you if you have some of uh, Earnhardt's magic beans over here, you can kind of teleport back to when Jason and his friends were at the uh, at the nightclub before uh, things went down. Bad things went down, you know. And then you can you can learn a little bit more. Uh, you learn a little bit about Jason and his friends, and also kind of like the the events that led to the the trouble. <laughs> All of her cars will. Extremely rich. Yep. Well, the thing about Ubisoft is, and their games is that I feel like they've kind of consistently put out games that have really interesting ideas that are really not polished, I think, is how I'd describe them. What's the guy's name? Buck. So his name is Buck. He likes to fuck. His name is Buck and he likes to fuck. Come on, Jason, finish it. Kill people on the daily. There's no need to be shy about a swear word. <laughs>
was enjoying the uh, the scenery. It's a very uh, I don't know. I'm having an interesting experience with this game. It's like uh, I used to think this game had like a like was like super super long, and then I don't know. I, I guess my standard for what's super long has just changed. Oh, there's a fuck. There's a thought I had earlier that I wanted to finish. I mentioned that like I I don't like uh, I don't like it when games pigeonhole you into like certain playstyles. That's one thing. I, one thing I really admire about games that don't. So like uh, Elden Ring is probably the most recent one that I could I could recall. But um, like Elden Ring just kind of lets you do whatever, and there's a lot of potential builds that you can just kind of make work. Like I wanted to be a holy knight with two great swords. That's totally okay. <laughs> And, like, uh, it's, uh, what's surprising to me is that there aren't a whole lot of builds that are straight up bad. It's just, like, there's decent enough, there's good, and there's busted. Like, those are the three grades of build I've seen so far. Like, the only way to build a character wrong is if you just, like, aren't really... You just aren't really paying attention. Mountain lion. And mountain lions and leopards here, wow. <laughs> he's throwing Molotovs at boars. Pray for this man. I think he's dead. I think he's totally dead. Oh, never mind. Animals don't like fire. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, but I think a I think a shovel run of uh, Far Cry Five might be good. Right, I I I don't think I'll do pure shovel because, uh, regrettably, you can't carry two stacks of shovels in that game. I think it's one of its great fl like fault flaws. Um, but uh, you can carry two different types of melee weapons, which you can both carry, carry two stacks of. And by stacks, I mean like I think at first you can only carry like three of one of any given melee weapon, but there's uh, there's skills you can unlock to the point where you can carry nine per type. So usually what I end up doing is that I end up taking nine shovels and I take nine baseball bats, and then like I'll just huck them whenever I see someone. Which is a lot of fun, because also that game, uh, so in this game, there's like a throwing knife takedown, which is one, the one I'm actually using. There's also a sidearm takedown, which is better, but I don't think I'm going to be using it uh, this time. Uh, the The way it works is that you, you kill a guy, and then you throw your, your throw you pull, you pull a knife off of his hip, and then throw it at someone. In um, Far Cry 5, the way that worked, the way they did it is that instead you've got, um, you have a weapon throw takedown. So you can, you can, uh, you'll, you'll, Grab, you'll grab a guy, you'll smack him over the head with a shovel, and then you'll look at another man and just underhand the shovel like a javelin and then just just kill him immediately. It's actually a lot of fun. Oh, that game's really good. I just I just wish they didn't do that thing where the, the bad guys kidnap you. It's just so, it's so disruptive, and it's annoying because I think they wanted to make it so that you didn't feel forced to, uh, they, they wanted to make it so that you didn't feel forced to do all of the content to unlock, like, the, the later components of the game. So what they did was, is that they made it so that the, the resistance meter, um, that you have to fill up, like, fills up relatively quickly. But that leads to a problem, because sometimes the way the missions go leads to, uh, certain characters dying, and those characters are mission givers. And the missions they give, give a lot of resistance points when you complete them. So it's super easy to completely miss out on, like, half of the game's content by accident by just doing missions. Because you'll do a couple missions, you'll get kidnapped, and then you'll try to do another mission, and then you'll get kidnapped again, and then if you do another mission, you'll get kidnapped again. So you did, like, four missions, and then completely maxed out the resistance meter. And then it's always, like, right at the end that they, the, the, the bad guy kills, like, one or two people, and then you lose access to a bunch of missions. It's a terrible, it's a terrible way to design it. I really think so. That game, that game is a very, there, that game's fun, but I don't really, I don't think it's very good for replay value. I think it's like, uh, cause like there's no, 
Like, like Far Cry 3 kind of plays with the idea of you having builds, because, like, there's a... You, you get skill points and you you put them in. But if you do enough content, like, or, or you do the... You do the... You at least attempt to do stealth with the, um... With the outpost, you can you, you can you can you can get enough XP to like get them all, but uh, in Far Cry 5 they don't even pretend. So you you could you could totally play the game the same way every time. Oh, and I mentioned that you can make the game pretty easy if you play a certain way. By uh, by play a certain way, I mean you just you just use an LMG. I'm holding an invisible camera. Excellent. This is what the Tatao has taught me. But uh, LMGs in Far Cry 5 just do everything. They they reload bizarrely quickly. Uh, the um... they reload uh, bizarrely quickly. They don't. Um... What was it? They don't really uh, have an issue with. Uh... Oh, okay. Those guys outside don't count. <laughs> oh, they disappeared. Okay. What's this saying? Uh. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So they re they reload super quickly. They kill people in like one burst, and you could down planes and helicopters with them. So there's like no point in using any of the other weapons unless you have like a like a personal issue with using a. Why can't I? What? Unless you have like a personal issue with using a. With using them. <laughs> I, I, I never used them because it's like, uh, it just kind of, I wanted to use a bunch of cowboy guns and dress up as a cowboy and do that whole thing. That's, that's what I was going for. But that's just me. Right. I think we're nearly I think we've nearly had I think we nearly have the first I think I'm gonna clean out the 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 first island I think I'm gonna do like the last uh, outpost and tower on it and then I think after that we'll be clear we'll be clear sailing for like the first half of the the game story because uh, the way this game's structured uh, so they're the rook islands uh, yeah, plural. So there's one island right here, and then there's another island right here, as you can see from all the stuff that you can't see. Um, so this is, uh, like, the, like right here, I think, is the last tower, and that's the second-to-last outpost. And then after that, we'll have the whole island done, and then we can just do all the, all the story missions. At some point, you'll be going from here all the way down here, and, like, this area is just totally different. There's actually Rook Island. There's like three Rook Islands, I think. Uh, there's and it's like it boils down to story mode part one, story mode part two, and then the third one's for co-op. And the co-op is weird. It's like I never played it personally, but there's like a there's like a whole set of uh, there's a whole set of characters just for co-op, and they have their own missions that they have to deal with. And there's some um, guy that they're all they all want to kill. They're all like mercenaries who um, got stranded on the islands because their boat crashed or whatever. And they were I think they all have their own reasons for like running away. And the captain uh, sold them out to pirates, and now their goal is to survive the pirates, survive the island, and kill the captain that uh, sold them out. So, yeah. The outpost is out, but if you want to truly help the wreck yet, you should check out the bullets. Got the bullets. Nothing to be afraid of. Check the bulletin board. There's nothing to be afraid of. You guys ever watch that Folgers incest commercial? <laughs> There's a... 
or is it Folgers? I don't know. It's that um, it's that coffee company. It's the, it's this weird. I uh, like I I had like I, I randomly saw online someone mentioned that and I was like no that's not a thing. Then I looked it up and apparently it's this old commercial where there's a a, a guy comes back from being deployed overseas right and uh, he comes back to his sister um, and uh, she they're like oh yeah they're like oh yeah it's so good to have you back and then the guy's like ah finally real coffee even though he came from fucking West Africa. <laughs> Which is, like, you know, should have, like, some of the best, like, local coffee he could ever possibly ask for. But no, he wants fucking... <laughs> he wants fucking, like, he wants he wants mass-produced American coffee... Exported coffee. And, um, what he... And then he gets there and he smells it. And then, like, he and his sister kind of have this long moment where they look into each other's eyes. And then just kind of, like, get a little closer as they're drinking coffee. And it's just... It's weirdly intimate. <laughs> It's really strange. Like, they don't look at each other like siblings, but I feel like if I saw my sister for the first time in a long time, she'd be like, eh, and then I'd be like, eh, and then she'd be like, you want to hear about all the dumb shit that happened while you were gone? And I was like, hell yeah. And I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I've seen it a million times. It's weird having, having, having a sibling is interesting because it's like, you, 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 it's like, they, like, you, you'll see, you'll see, shows where where siblings are presented and they always uh it's never it's never quite correct because they always think they always assume oh yeah two siblings they're always super super close to each other right like they share their lives with each other and they're like really close and then they they'll never like uh like they'll they like they'll always uh like and sometimes it gets really weird especially if you watch anime and the thing is, is that it's it's almost never like that. Siblings usually either kind of hate each other because they grew up with each other, and that means that they've kind of, for better or worse, they they've been they've been through they've been there for each other's entire lives. But like also, they're just really comfortable with each other. It's like having a best friend that you're kind of related to. Casually shoved that over. But. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. It, it's not. It's like it's always weird whenever you see people presented as anything but that because it's just not. It's just not right. <laughs> I'm not sure there's some pairs of siblings out there that are different from like uh, my experience because like you know no two people are the same obviously. But uh, I've just never seen them like I've just never seen a pair of siblings that act the way some siblings do on like TV or in anime, especially not in anime. I think there was a Tumblr post about that once, where it's just like, uh, there's that whole thing where, um, like two, like, uh, like, um, like, like in an anime, it's always like a, it's like a, like a, like the little sister comes in and she's like, oh, I love my big bro, and then the big bro's like, oh, I would do anything for my little sister, and then, like, someone replies, like, well, how, like, how would siblings actually act when they greet each other, and then, like, the reply was, brother, hey, sister, hey. <laughs> Like, they're, they're totally accustomed to each other, and there's, like, you know... However close their relationship is, it's not, like, overt. I don't know. Anime's weird. Incest is gross. That's, 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 that's the end, that's the end stated, uh... And my, my end stated opinion. Rocky out are making this more difficult for me. See if I can get in from here while these guys are distracted. the enemies in this game can shoot as well as they can considering they're constantly running like left and right while firing from the hip i'm pretty sure if you tried to do the same rules in this game like you would not you would not hit anything <laughs> Mm, 
the hell am I supposed to spend my money on? <laughs> I guess I'll- I want to replace something. Uh, I guess I'll get the- the- yeah, fuck it, the flight door. Let's buy the fucking fuel tank. Put it there. Yeah, we've got a- we've got a close range weapon now, kind of. <laughs> also, we're not looting anymore. I- I can't do- I can't do anything with all this money. <laughs> I literally just said I wasn't going to loot anymore, and the first thing I fucking do is loot a box. I'm very good at sticking to my word. Undying Bear, don't we need that? Hang on. French Kit, oh hell yeah. Black Panther. No, I don't want that. No, I don't need that. Rubbles? That's Blood Komodo. Blood Komodo. There are a few, yeah, maybe maybe some of those at some point. I somehow have 11 special arrows. Not sure how that happened. My quiver's as big as it's gonna get. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I'd ever want. Definitely don't need the Undying Bear. I think that's for one of the ammunition pouches. Uh, that's for... This might be a weird topic, and I'm sorry if it makes any of you uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm going to keep going with it because I, I can't. I'm, I'm currently on like uh, the thought process. But uh, the funny thing about like the the whole the whole like older brother like little sister weird relationship thing is so pervasive in anime. I like I, I kind of I kind of avoid it a lot of the times because whenever I see like the there's a big brother character and there's a little sister and their relationship doesn't seem quite right, I I generally bail out of it because I'm just going to get annoyed. I had a friend who recommended an anime to me that he really, really liked, and it was, uh, I think it was, like, Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai or something like that. And from what he, when I heard, it was really, really good, and I heard nothing but praise for it, but fuck. Like, I, I started episode two, and the fucking, like, the guy wakes up in bed, and his little sister crawls out of the bed sheets, like, like, the, of the same bed that he's sleeping in, and I'm like, alright, I can't, I'm not doing this, and then I, I just stopped. <laughs> Like, if I'm with a friend, I can kind of muscle through it, and they'll, they'll poke fun at me for it, because I'm just like, ah, this is making me uncomfortable, and they're like, haha, you're uncomfortable, and then I'll be like, ah, whatever. But if I'm watching something on my own, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just gonna be like, you know what, it's not worth it. Just weird, you know? <laughs> Excellent. The fire arrow is quite good. I'm glad, I, I'm glad, I, glad I'm using that. If I ever, if I, if I ever go dead silent whenever I catch someone on fire, I'm just admiring my handiwork. That's it. I have, this is not how I expected this climbing to go, but whatever. Okay, the climbing these towers is getting a little, it's starting to get a little complicated. It's, uh, it gets really messy on the second island where, like, there's, like, barely any metal left on those things when you try to climb, climb, climb up, so it's, like, it gets really, it gets really weird. It starts taking a while to figure out where you're supposed to go. First person platforming, it's, um, it's something. I'm not much of a platforming guy. I, I don't like climbing in games, but I don't like platforming where you're supposed to like hop, skip, and jump across like floating, floating platforms. I, I'm not big on those. I, I just don't like it. I don't like jumping. I, I'm not a jumping person. <laughs> I, I literally am afraid of heights, so I guess that might... Uh... Actually, that probably has literally nothing to do with it, but... Uh... 
It goes to show that I don't like jumping in, in, in the, out, off, off the computer, too. <sighs> 44 Magnum, Magnum is free in stores. That's exciting. It's interesting how much bows vary between games, because, like, the, uh, the controls for them are all the same, and there's kind of, like, a general, like, combined understanding of, like, what you're supposed to do with the bow. Like, you, you aim with right click, hold down left click to pull the arrow back, and then release to fire, and then, like, you press R to cancel the shot when it's, if it's, if you don't want to shoot it. But, uh, like, outside of that, like, the way the bow works and, like, what role it's supposed to fulfill tends to vary a lot, I feel. Like, sometimes the, bow, the bow's, like, pure utility, like in Valorant, where, like, um, you can only really use a bow if you're playing a Sova, and Sova uses it to, like, shoot little radar arrows and shock arrows and things like that. You never directly shoot someone with an arrow with, like, a sharp arrowhead. Which makes sense, because, you know, so, you know, you have, you have a gun. Like, <laughs> why, why, why bother? Can I hit this guy's head from back here? Okay, we're gonna test something out, because this is the first time I had a heavy guy that I couldn't, like, kill silently. Did that work? Oh, excellent. Oh, okay. That's the second time in a row that's happened. Like, a, a car of dudes shows up in the middle, and then the game's like, oh, you killed all of them. <laughs> Just ignore that last group. <laughs> Islands. Glad to see this. Uh, th that booklet must be really popular because literally every single jeep on this island has it like uh, taped to the <laughs> to the um, the sun the sun shield shade. What are those called? I don't know. I feel like it's I feel like it's something really obvious that I've heard before, but just didn't log into my memory. GTA is going to come out. The explosive arrows are funny. <laughs> Hang on, let's make some more. Just so, like, it's like, you just shoot the arrow and just immediately explodes. It's kind of wacky. <laughs> just, uh, look at me. I'm just a poor little boy with a little bow. <laughs> like, it's such a tiny arrow, too. <laughs> I 
think I, I think I watched a video once where some guys were testing out a literal explosive arrow that someone made. Like the the head of the arrow literally had like this little like canister that was that looked like it was made out of metal, and had like a like it had a pressure point at the tip. So when you shot it, it did explode when it landed. It was really unpredictable because like the because uh, heavier arrowheads don't sail very straight. Like the 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 way arrows are designed, it's like really important that you like streamline the arrow so that it actually flies straight once it leaves the bow. Because there's no barrel or anything, making sure that it stays straight like like through its path, so that just uh, it's not like firing a rocket out of a launcher or anything like that. I kind of no. I thought he was gonna fire his rocket at the at the tiger. Is that clear? Hell yeah, dude! I love it. I love how sometimes the animals will just clear the outpost for you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You've earned your rest. Appreciate it. I'll make sure your skin goes to good use, partner. I fucking love that, the name for that loot. Someone's keys. Like, there's an implication there that's bad. Alright. Looks like, uh, yeah, we've cleared out the whole first island. So, I'm going to leave it at that. Um... That was a that was a that was a good that was a good session. Uh, I'm 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 enjoying the the run so far. I hope uh, you know I'm I'm kind of thrilled that the uh, the fact that there's special arrows means that I'm not totally screwed when it comes to uh, like heavies or anything like that. And uh, I'm actually having I'm actually I'm actually enjoying myself quite a bit with the uh, the setup we've got for this uh, this run through of uh, Far Cry Three. So uh, with that said, um, thank you very much for coming over and uh, watching me. Um, hope you guys had fun. Uh, and with that said, I think I'll put up a new schedule. I think I'll start putting up schedules once again, because um, I'm pretty settled where I'm at now, and I shouldn't be moving around too much in the foreseeable future, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back into, like, the rhythm of it, and, uh, I think I'll put up a schedule on Twitter. Um, uh, I'll probably make, I'm probably gonna turn my, um, I'm probably gonna turn Thursday into my week, uh, day, st my, my streaming day for the week instead of Wednesday, because my schedule's, like, my actual, like, off-computer uh, schedule has changed quite a bit. But, uh, I think ultimately, uh, I think ultimately we're gonna be back in the swing of things pretty soon. Uh, but with that said, I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of the, rest of the weekend. Um, if you got any Sunday left, I hope you, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope the upcoming week is good. Um, yeah. Uh, see you next time. Goodbye.